Hello everyone, welcome back to another online edition of SFCAC Sunday School. I'm so happy that you can join us today. We will learn God's Word and have a simple arts and craft activity that you can do together with your family. There will be two different lessons prepared for you. One is for K through 5th grade kids, and the quick version is for 2 to 4 years old kids. It's a blessing that we can still worship together in this time. Growing in our faith and learning about what God is teaching us, like how we can love Him and love each other. Let's start in a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you for being our God. We praise you today because Jesus is alive and now we have a hopeful future. As we listen and patiently wait with joyful and thankful hearts, let us continue to learn more about you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. After Jesus' death and resurrection, he stayed on earth for 40 days before going back to heaven. Jesus told his disciples goodbye and left the earth in a cloud. Have you played musical chair before? If you did, when you were walking around the circle of chairs and wait for the music to stop, the feeling of not knowing when the music would stop is like how we don't know when the time Jesus will return. One thing we know for sure is Jesus is coming back to earth and we want to be ready. What an exciting day! Today, we're going to learn about a very special event that we are waiting for and what we should do until it happens. Jesus come to earth as a baby, lived a perfect life, died on the cross, and came alive again three days later. After his resurrection, he was seen by over 500 people and stayed on earth 40 days. One day, Jesus took his disciples to the mountain and right before their eyes, he went up to heaven. As the disciples stared into the sky, two men, angels in white robes, promised them Jesus would return again. Before Jesus returned to heaven, he made a promise. According to John chapter 14, verses 1, 2, and 3, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. What did Jesus promise? That's right. He promised to go and prepare a place in heaven and to come back for his followers so they could be with him forever. We are still waiting for Jesus to come back. But it is important to know when Jesus makes a promise, he always keeps it. Perhaps you have questions such as, when will he return? Or what will happen when he returns? Before Jesus left the earth, his disciple asked him many of those same questions. Let's look at some of those questions and how the Bible answers for each one of them. What are some signs that points to Jesus' return? Well, let's read Mark chapter 13, verses 3, 5 through 8, and 10. Verses 3. As Jesus was sitting on Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately. Verses 5 to 8. Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming, I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such thing must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, and famine. These are the beginning of birth pain. Verses 10 and the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Yes, Jesus said there would be false teachers, even ones claiming to be Christ, who would mislead many people in the last days. Jesus did not want them to be fearful, but there will be wars, famine, and earthquakes. He warned that many believers would be hated, persecuted, and even killed. Sin would be raging everywhere. When you see all kinds of trouble, you can know Jesus will return. The good news is the gospel will be preached to the entire world before the end comes. When will Jesus come again? 
Well, let's read Mark chapter 13, verses 32. But about the day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. We understand why the disciples had questions for Jesus. Of course, they did not want Jesus to leave. But if he had to go, when would he come back? Jesus said, no one on earth knows when. Even the angels do not know. Only God the Father knows the appointed time. How will he come back? Let's read Mark chapter 13 verses 26 to 27. At that time people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory, and he will send his angels to gather his elected from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. Do you remember what the angels said to the people as Jesus went up into heaven? He will come down just as they saw him go up in the clouds. The people will see Jesus coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And Jesus will send his angels to gather his followers. Who is Jesus coming for? Let's read Mark chapter 13 verses 27 again. And he will send his angels and gather his elected from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. When it is time, Jesus will tell his angels to gather his elected home to heaven. Elected is another word for Jesus' followers. John 3.16 tells us that all who believe in Jesus will have eternal life. When Jesus comes back, only his followers will go to live with him in heaven. Why is Jesus coming back? Well, let's read Philippians chapter 2 verses 9 to 11. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Jesus is Creator and the King of the world, and He is coming back to rule over it. He will restore everything to its perfect condition. There will be no more sin or death. The devil and his followers will be sent to eternal punishment. Jesus will be lifted up as king and we will worship him. There will be no more pain, sadness, suffering, or death because those things will be done away with in heaven. What a wonderful day it will be when Jesus return. That's something to look forward to. Let's explore today's lesson. I'm going to read two different passages and I want you to listen carefully and remember which things will and will not be in heaven. The first one is in Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 through 4. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things had passed away. Now I'll read the second passage, coming from Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 through 5. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding a fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. 
the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of the lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign for ever and ever. I will now show some words on the screen, and you will tell the person next to you if it is something that will or will not be in heaven. Jesus, sickness, throne, sadness, tears, beautiful home, death. Tree of Life, Sin, Street of Gold. When Jesus comes to the earth the second time, he will come as the ruling king, and he has promised to take us to the most wonderful place you can imagine. Of course, Jesus will be there on his throne, and he is preparing something too wonderful to be described: a beautiful home, a tree of life, a street of gold, and much, much more. There will be no sickness, no sadness, no tears, no death, and no sin. How does our lesson apply to us today? As a reminder, all month. We have learned about the last days of Jesus' life, his suffering and death on the cross, his resurrection, his return to heaven, and today his return to earth. Do any of you remember why Jesus came to earth? Jesus endured terrible suffering because of his great love for us. He made the way for us to be close to God and live with Him forever in a wonderful place called heaven. When Jesus finishes work on earth, he returned to heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus is the ruling king. Some day, when he returned to earth, every person will worship him as the king of the universe. When we want to give up doing God's will, we must look forward to our eternal life with Jesus. How did Jesus keep going? He thought about the job what was to come, the joy of doing His Father's work, and us being with Him forever. He endured the shame of dying on the cross because afterward He would be seated at the right hand of God's throne. The reward was greater than the suffering. How shall we respond to today's lesson? Well, the Bible tells us when Jesus comes back. To the earth, he will create a new heaven and a new earth, where only righteousness, the right things, will be. We can look forward to a time when there will be no more sin or death. We don't know when that will be, but what should we do while we wait? Jesus said we must be ready. When you get ready for school, you know what time you have to be dressed and have everything together to walk out that door. But what if your mom and dad told you to be ready because they were taking you on a very exciting trip, but didn't tell you when you were leaving? You would go ahead and get everything packed so you would be ready to go when it is time. We don't know when Jesus will return, so we have to always be ready. We are to be pure. Look at this photo of the water; it is clear and purified. We are to be like this water. Our choices. To reflect the truth of God's word, First John chapter three verses three says, "Every person who has the hope that Jesus will return purifies him or herself, just as Jesus is pure." Finally, we are to be patient. James chapter five verses eight reminds Christian to be patient. Each day that passes is a day closer to Jesus' return. When bad things happen, you can remind yourself that Jesus is coming back, and He will make things right. He will reward you for doing what is right. We may not know when Jesus will return, but we know He will come back because He promised He would. God always keeps His promises. The day He comes back will be the happiest day of Christian's life. This is the quick version. 
Jesus came to earth as a baby, lived a perfect life, died on the cross, and came alive again three days later. After his resurrection, he was seen by over 500 people and stayed on earth for 40 days. One day, he took his disciples to a mountain and right before their eyes, he went to heaven. Before Jesus returned to heaven, he made a promise. He promised to go and prepare a place in heaven and to come back for his followers so they could be with him forever. We are still waiting for Jesus to come back, but it is important to know when Jesus make a promise, he always keeps it. As we wait for Jesus to return, we must be prepared. Jesus warned all his believers about things that will happen when he returns. Some of the things we should be prepared for is knowing false teachers who would mislead many people. Bad things will happen like war, famine, and earthquake. There will be also people not liking Christian. They will be treated badly and even be killed. When we see all kinds of trouble, you can know Jesus will be returning. The good news is that the gospel will be preached to the entire world before the end comes. No one knows when he will return to earth. Only God the Father knows the time. Jesus will return just as they saw him go up in the clouds and he will send his angels to gather his followers to go live with him in heaven. The reason why Jesus is coming back is because he is the creator and king of the world. He is coming back to rule over it. There will be no more sin or death, no more pain, sadness, and suffering. Everything will be perfect. That is something to look forward to, and that's the end of our story for today. It's time for Arts and Craft! Today, we're making binoculars. You will need colored papers, colored material, two toilet paper rolls or anything that is cylinder with two open ends, ribbons or strings, scissors, and tape. Younger kids, you can join us on making this, but remember to leave the cutting to your parents or someone who's older than you. Let's begin. First, Start wrapping tape around the two toilet paper rolls or your open-ended cylinder and make sure they're even. Then, cut strips of the colored papers, wrap them around the rolls, and tape them together. Continue until you cover up the toilet paper rolls or your cylinders. For younger kids, go ahead and color or draw your design on a white piece of paper and ask your parent to help you cut the design and tape it around the toilet papers or rolls. After, grab some ribbons or strings and tape it to the inside of the toilet paper rolls or cylinder for it to be around the neck. And there you have it, a binocular as a reminder for you to look forward to Jesus' return. Before we end, I have two challenges for you this week. One is I want you to be ready, be pure, and be patient as you wait for Jesus' return. And two, this is a fun one, making sure you are pay attention, how many arrows did you see throughout this video? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this Sunday's lesson. Even though we can't be together at this time, we can still grow our faith and worship God. Thank you for joining me today. Make it a great week and hope to see you next time. Bye-bye!